Greetings, people of the internet. This is Scott with CircWorks. It's Friday. It's Fan Art Friday, and today I'm going to old school with the classic robot. Uh, remember this guy from Buck Rogers, Twiggy? Biggie, biggie, biggie. <laughs> So, yeah, I'm going back a little ways on this one. So th this is, uh, I don't know if you younger younger kids know about this one, but, uh, oh, you might. I don't know, pop culture seems to, you know, span generations a lot of times. So, um, but, uh, yeah, so this is, uh, this is Twiggy from uh, Buck Rogers in the 20, the 25th century, I think. It's definitely not 21st. We're in the 21st, yeah. Uh, Buck Rogers in the 25th century, which... Um, if you even go further back, was an old old serial, kind of like the Flash Gordon uh, type things, and probably like I'm sure it was you know a pulp, you know uh, a pulp character as well. Uh, my dad was a you know he, he used to watch Buck Rogers and all that, um, but you know after Star Wars was a big hit, this was back in the 70s. They you know they were pretty much looking for any kind of property that they could turn into you know turn into a, a, like a space. Uh, a space saga or space opera, I guess you call them. And uh, so uh, I think this was originally, this was after Battlestar Galactica. And if you watch, if, if, you, if you're a fan of the old Battlestar Galactica, and I have, you know, I have a special place in my heart for Battlestar Galactica as well, the, the original. I mean, the, I mean, of course, if you've seen the new, the new, the, you know, the latest Battlestar Galactica, I mean, obviously it's superior in so many ways, storytelling and characterization and all that stuff. But I don't know, I still... Still, really do like the the old Battlestar Galactica, especially like the old Cylons, which I thought about doing. And and one of the reasons why I'm doing this, uh, doing a robot today, is uh, we're we're approaching the end of the month, and there's a robot challenge. And I already did, I already did one drawing. If you watch the last uh, Sketch Time video I did, and it was kind of an original thing, but I figured uh, for Fan Art Friday, I'd do another robot and just add a little couple different submissions for the the uh, art casters challenge which is robots this month and if you aren't on the art casters uh, if you're you know if you're an artist and you i don't even i i thought you know the stipulation was you know being art casters is that you um draw and then you you cast you know via video or whatever audio or <laughs> probably video since you're an artist a visual artist um you know you do youtube videos of what you do and everything but i don't think i think it's beyond that now i think anyone who's an artist can post on there and everything so even if you aren't broadcasting um but anyway so they do a monthly challenge and they haven't done one in a while but they're doing one now and it's robots so i figured yeah i'm gonna, gonna go old school and do uh do something but what should i do and i thought about cylons and i'll probably <laughs> i'll probably get around to doing a cylon one of these days, because I, I, I may have done one of those on camera. I have to look back at my Fan Art Fridays. I may have already done a Cylon, but um, so I picked this little guy, and uh, I don't know, not the not the coolest robot he, when I was a kid. I mean, who was kind of like, I think my brother was a bigger fan. He was a little younger than me, um, but he, I think he was kind of a big fan of this guy. But you know, we had the toys and everything, and um, you know, they had uh, one thing I remember was. Um, yeah, because they had the Star Wars toys, and I'm sure everyone knows what the Star Wars toys look out, but look like. But the uh, the Buck Rogers toys, they were made by Mego, and it wasn't like the Mego dolls, if you remember those. They, they I think they did some large scale Buck Rogers characters, but they were like the 12 inch, like kind of like 12 inch figures, not like the, I don't know what the height was on the original Mego dolls, like the Star Trek and the and the you know superheroes that everyone's probably familiar with. Um, but uh, Mego, towards the end, before they kind of went out of business, and I don't know if this was, might have been one of them put them out of business, but even though I think the film did pretty well, I mean, it spawned a, spawned a television series and everything, um, but they did have, the, they had the toys, and of course, any kind of space toy I would collect, you know, I went from Star Wars to Battlestar Galactica, and then on to this, so we had a few of the toys, we had Twiki, this guy here, and then, of course, Buck Rogers, and this guy Tiger Man and some other I don't know a bunch of different figures but um, so Mego they their figures were more like uh, kind of like the you know what you would think of as the second generation of um, of like GI Joe not the GI Joe dolls from the 60s and 70s but uh, the 80s GI Joe that everyone's pretty familiar with the you know real American hero stuff um, so they're kind of like that really articulated and everything but the problem was um, 
unlike the Star Wars figures, because they didn't have all those little points of articulation and everything, um, they seem to break a lot easier. So my parents, like, after we bought some of these Buck Rogers characters and some other ones like it, they, you know, Mego had a, you know, you can search the internet of, like, the Mego little, you know, three inch, whatever it is, three and a half inch figures. Um, and you can kind of see they had they had everything. I think they had like Dukes of Hazard. Dukes of Hazard. Now that I think of it, I'm sorry I'm going on a tangent, but they, one thing that I like to do when I do these, you know, reminisce about <laughs> when I'm doing it like an old school drawing from when I was a kid, I just reminisce about those times. So, so those tend to ramble back and forth. But I, I seem to remember that the, and I could be wrong, but there I know there was some lines where it was kind of mixed because they would have some of the figures would be in the in like like the Star Wars where they weren't fully articulated and some of them would be like more like the the G.I. Joes and they would be in like the same set like if you had like A-Team or if you had whatever Dukes of Hazard or, or you know they had so many different lines like that but I remember some of them specifically like they would mix them up and I always thought that was real weird because as a kid you know I didn't want to play with action figures that were of a different scale or whatever. Or like I would mix the different universes and stuff, but I was real, you know, I don't know, I was big on scale or whatever, and, and it thought it was weird that yeah, the little, those G.I. Joe type action figures, they just didn't seem to work with the other ones. And I kind of played with them separately, I think. Um, but what I was getting at earlier was that, the, you know, they would, because they were so articulated, they and they had like little rubber bands that held them together, and we would always break them, and they just, you know, so my parents like refused to, after a while, after we broke all the Buck Rogers figures and stuff, they refused to, to buy more figures like that. And so when G.I. Joe came around, even though it was um, Hasbro, I guess, I think it was, I think it was still Hasbro at the time. Now Hasbro's everything, Hasbro's Kenner, Hasbro's everything, but I think it was still Hasbro when they came out. Um, they were probably a little better quality, you know, than the Buck Rogers and stuff, but, um, but the, th ah, dang, I just got ink all over my hand. Sorry about that. I know you can't see that. <laughs> I'm doing, if you haven't, if you haven't noticed, I'm doing a narration. Um, so anyway, but, uh, yeah, there's always going to be some technical difficulties off screen right now. My hand's all black with ink, but I'll clean that up after I'm done with this. Um, but uh, yeah, like I said, the quality of the G.I. Joe guys are probably a little bit better, but but that didn't stop my parents, and so I, I, I never had any G.I. Joe figures. And plus, I was kind of getting a little older. It was, If I remember timelines correctly, Masters of the Universe was around that time, and I was bigger into Masters of the Universe. But um, yeah, so never had, never, never really had any G.I. Joe, and I guess I wasn't real big on like uh, like war toys and stuff, but looking back, you know, a lot of those, like the vehicles and stuff, they're pretty awesome and I did I would go over to friends and I'd play them and stuff like that so um but uh yeah so I I, I do remember those toys and I you know I also had like they also had little army men um the size you know the, just the plastic guys and little base like you saw, saw in Toy Story with the little green army men but they had a set like that for Buck Rogers and then they had like just the plastic ships and everything like that um but yeah so Buck Rogers was fun um it's one of one of the first you know memories i had of um of actually going to see a movie in a drive-in and i don't know if it was the first one um i remember a few movies when i was a kid actually you know what i think i think i saw star wars for the second time in a drive-in and i remember because I had must have seen it before because I knew this was coming. But when the sand people came up and they, not, you know, when they kind of jumped up and with the the gaffy sticks and everything, and they score, they, you know, you know, knock Luke over and everything. Since I had previously seen that, the second time I saw it was in the drive-in, and um, I remember like knowing it was coming, and I would duck. I, you know, I was a little kid. I ducked under the dash, and I was like freaked out about all that. But um, but yeah, so I did see Star Wars. Um, but there's certain ones I remember in the drive-in like earlier on um uh pete's dragon was another one i remember seeing but buck rogers was was one that i saw um as a double feature i mean they're usually always double features in the drive-in but i remember the second movie that came on after that and uh it was a movie called laser blast and if you're a fan of mystery science theater 3000 you probably heard of this movie i mean it is notoriously bad and even as a little kid you know because sometimes sometimes as a little kid you'll be watching a movie and you know oh, this is great this is awesome and then later later you grow up and watch it and like oh my gosh this is this is like horrible you know what was i thinking 
Um, but even as a kid, I was like, oh man, this is bad. You know, it was like, it opens with like, they had some, you know, real bad, like Harry House and knockoff, you know, animation that just these creatures that looked like they were made out of clay. And it was, it was bad. And it was about this guy who these aliens came down and they, I don't know if they left the weapon or, or what happened. I've seen it since, and I've seen it on Mystery Science Theater with the commentary and them these fashion it. Um, but they, they somehow this guy gets a hold of this weapon and like he wears the we- he puts the weapon on and it to like totally changes his personality and he goes nuts and everything. And um, but uh, yeah, it was so bad. And it's and you know I didn't even re- like know what the name of the movie was. And this would be like a recurring theme with like some drive-in movies that I go see, and it's usually one that I I, I would see one movie. And I can remember the movies, the paired up, which movies they were, but um, it was, uh, so I saw Buck Rogers in this movie, Laser Blast, and it was, <laughs> this movie, I just remember some being so bad, but I don't remember, I couldn't remember what it was called. Um, it was, uh, you know, because it wasn't the main feature, that wasn't what I went to see, you just kind of stayed and you watch, and I don't even know if we made through the whole movie or whatever. Um, but you know, and then for, since then I was always like, Oh, what was that movie? It was so bad. I don't know what it's called. And you tell your friends. And of course, you know, this is just a little B movie that most people didn't see. Um, but, but it turns out, you know, it, it, the funny thing is with like nowadays with the internet, I mean, you can just, you can just post that. Anyone remember this movie and you'll get a hundred comments. Oh yeah, that's this or that or whatever. But you know, when you're younger and not everyone to see those and you don't have access to those all those um you know that network of people that have also seen it and it just it opens you know the internet of course kind of opens that whole geek blogosphere or geekosphere or whatever you want to call it where you can interact and like you realize that you're not the only one that have seen these these movies or or whatever it is or toys or, or whatever but i i remember just searching it down and trying to yeah, asking people do you remember what this movie was or whatever and you know, could not, could not figure, could not find anyone else who had seen it. And it's almost like those, those one, you know, almost of legend, like, did I imagine this thing? Because, like, no one's ever heard of this. And then, you know, here I am later watching Mystery Science Theater 3000, and it comes on. I go, this is that movie. This is that crazy bad movie. And, um, and it happened again with another movie. I went to see this movie called Iceman. And I remember that movie being pretty good. Um, I haven't seen it since, but it was, it had like, uh, Timothy Hutton, I think, I don't know if he was the actual Iceman or if he was the guy that unfroze the Iceman, but they found this caveman in a block of ice and then they, they brought him back and everything. But I saw this movie at the theater and the movie that came on after it was this movie called, oh, now I'm trying to remember, Death Stalker. And it's also an- another like notoriously cult bad movie. Um, and it's, but it's got, you know. I've got it on like VHS somebody you know my brother because me and my brother both saw this movie and I don't remember much about it It, it's like a sword and sorcery type story and I I mean a lot of people know about it now it's like kind of a cult favorite Um, but if you're into like barbarians and swords and sorcery and all that kind of stuff but I remember this scene where this guy (laughs) This kid, the guy, barbarian guy just jumps up out of this cave and then there's this big explosion. It just looked like this guy just blew up like he just jumped out of nowhere and just blew up. And, you know, and of course, I guess I haven't, I've got, like I said, I got it on VHS, but I haven't really re- rewatched it. But me and my brother were just laughing because it was so, you know, you know, so funny. And back then, you know, of course, this was, you know, this is the 80s sword and sorcery so this movie has like a lot of nudity and stuff like that and we're like oh i can't believe we're watching this and of course you're you're there with your family like probably my dad took me or something and so you're trying not be like oh you know you know boobs and all this stuff and like oh you know but uh <laughs> so it was just one of those things that uh yeah but it was like super bad but we always remember it me and my brother would talk about it and another one of those things you don't know uh yeah you trying to figure out what it what what the movie's called and everything and and searching it down and then later on um uh, my you know my brother had and i forgot about it but my brother had always been asking about this movie what it was and my brother has this friend that's just this huge movie buff and and specific a lot of horror movies and stuff he knows pretty much about every movie and not not just um 
not just movies, but at, like he could tell you who the who the uh, second unit director was on any particular like horror movie. I mean, he's that in depth, but but he goes, oh yeah, that's uh, that's Deathstalker. Like like it was like everyone knew it. <laughs> so so he gave me my brother gave me that uh, VHS tape once for my birthday or something like that. So so I do remember that. But yeah, going back, um, yeah. Uh, so anyway, so yeah, this is again, this is. Tweaky from Buck Rogers. He was kind of, um, I guess he was their answer to both R2-D2 and C-3PO in a way. I mean, the personality-wise wasn't the same, but um, but uh, anyway, what was I thinking? Um, I got distracted. I got a text on my, my phone here. <laughs> Man, everything's going. But uh, yeah, so the, the little circle thing you see on his chest is another robot called Dr. Theopolis. And he's kind of like the, I don't know, he's, he was kind of had like a, you know, a normal, like sophisticated voice and everything. And, and he was like the brains and everything. And I'm, I'm not, <laughs> I can't remember exactly what Twiggy's whole, what the reason for his design was um, other than to carry around this, this smart robot. Um, but, uh, but yeah, he was, so he was kind of the R2-D2. He, 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 he could talk, but everything he said, bef you know, everything he was said was like preceded by like bitty, 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 bitty. And then he would say something, but Dr. Theopolis would like translate the rest of what he was saying and everything. Um, but the cool thing about the voice of this particular robot, that he was voiced by Mel Blanc, which as you know, if you know anything about animation or voiceover, you got to know Mel Blanc. I mean, he did everything and pretty much all the Looney Tunes and everything. But, but yeah, and you can, I mean, you can definitely hear hear that it, he sounds similar to some other voices that you may have heard heard him him do. But uh, yeah, so voiced by Mel Blanc, that was that was pretty cool. But yeah, again, it was kind of he wasn't really, you know. I remember liking Buck Rogers, but not as much as like Battlestar Galactica. And they shame they 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 were both done by Universal. I think they were both meant to be series, but uh, but they actually put like I said, I saw this in the drive-in. So they put uh, they put it out on um, they put it out in the theater, I think instead. And I think it was a pretty decent hit. I mean, it had the toy line and all that stuff, and um, and then they made a series of it, but. Um, but they, yeah, they reuse so much stuff from like Battlestar Galactica. It's funny because you'd be watching, and my dad would point that out to me when I was a kid, because you you'd watch them flying the, like the ships and stuff, and the uh, controllers like the little joysticks they used to do the controls and everything. Same exact setup as as Battlestar Galactica. So it's almost like it's like nowadays I don't think you would do that so much because. Um, because just with the internet, people will point that stuff out, but maybe back then just budgetary reasons is they're like, yeah, no one's gonna notice or something, or people don't pay that close attention to that, just a just a science fiction movie or whatever, but you know, a lot of the ships and, and, and you know, props and things like that, and uh, special effects too, like when a ship would blow up, and you see that in, in like Battlestar Galactica, you know, they blow up, uh, <laughs> anytime you see a, like a Cylon Raider ship blow up, it would be like the same exact explosion, they just repurpose that. Which is cool. I mean, you know, I remember that they would do that. Like they do stuff like that on like shows, like you know, like animated shows too. Like um, like He Man, they would use a lot of the same. Well, especially when he turned into He Man. No matter where he was at the time, when he goes to turn into He Man, the background changes and he's out in front of Castle Grayskull and all that. So, so that was just something I guess they did back then. But it's kind of interesting to pick that stuff out and look at it and everything. So. But anyway, so yeah, this is uh, gonna be my submission for uh, you know the uh, Artcasters Robot Challenge, along with some other ones. And you know, it's not you know these are just quick sketches; they're just for fun and everything. And um, like I was saying, on if you go back and if you want to watch, and I'll probably have a link to that in the, the end of this video. But if you want to watch um, the latest uh, sketch time video that I did, um, I talk a little bit about uh, maybe doing something different for Fan Art Friday, um, more like parody stuff like t-shirt designs uh, featuring like pop culture stuff I don't know I may or may not do that and, and when I actually do I don't know exactly when that's gonna be um, but uh, for now yeah I'm just gonna keep doing these kind of quick sketches um, nothing you know <laughs> nothing amazing but they're fun they're fun to do and they're just kind of turn the camera on and do a little quick little sketch and then do a little voiceover after it but yeah that's gonna probably about wrap it up if you guys um, uh, have any questions or if you have any requests of other things you want to see other 
characters doing secret fan art Friday. Maybe I'll do keep doing some robots for a while. Um, kind of got away from Firefly after the fiasco with the, the few uh, videos that I lost and everything. So I don't know if I'll go back to that or not, but um, but I'll definitely keep doing some fan art Fridays in the in the meantime, and and uh, and hopefully some more original stuff because I enjoy doing that as well. Um, so this again, Twiki and Doctor Theopolis from Buck Rogers and the 25th Century. Um, yeah, thanks for liking, uh, thanks for um, commenting and subscribing, and I'll catch you guys later, and that is all.